I'm even close to keeping the law. So how do we react today when we talk about how good we are in, 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 in keeping the law? He's saying when you do that, glory be to God, listen, you're challenging the world. You're challenging the world to higher stands of living when you do your best to keep the, the laws of God. Every one of the laws of God. Let not forget to assemble ourselves together and so much more as we see today approaching. You can add that in on one of the commandments. I don't think it's number one through ten, but God said it, it's in there. Think about righteous living. What would we do, church, today? If we went back to righteous, hey, ha, ha, listen, most of us folks here, well, I see some younger folks, but 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 us been around a little while. Amen. We've been in church for a little while. You seen the difference in the church? I remember a young boy growing up down at Glen Fork, just a young man. And my grandmother and my grandfather on my dad's side, they was holiness. My grandmothers wouldn't cut that hair, not for nothing. It's way down here, and she rolled it up all the time, and she kept it in a big ball right here, that big ball of white hair, buddy, just pretty and long as it could be. Wouldn't cut that stuff for nothing. I could go down through Glen Fork as a young boy, and I could have picked out every one of them church-going natives down there in the summertime sitting on the porch. They didn't wear no, they, 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 their, their dresses covered their elbows and their knees. They had proper dress and proper speaking and a proper way of acting. I defile any man to go through Grim Fork on a hot day and pick out not only them, glory be to God, but anybody else is supposed to be living. Hey, if it was righteous living then, what's happened today? Is it not still righteous living? What's happened to righteousness in our churches today? We have lost the righteous, the view of righteousness and the importance of righteousness in our churches today. We don't even like it applied to the church today, glory be to God. Higher standards of living, higher standards in righteousness, glory be to God. Hey, think about it. A few things has got to happen that we're going to get higher standards in righteousness today. If we're ever going to see it today, a few things have got to happen. First, we've got to recognize, glory be to God, your total dependence upon Jesus Christ. You can't reach the goal of righteous, uh, of righteous living without looking to him for everything. We've got to obey the Holy Ghost of God, glory be to God. Listen to the Holy Ghost as he speaks to us and tells us. We need to listen to the, uh, uh, hey, uh, what's that song? We need the old time preachers. Preaching against sin, glory be to God. Preachers righteous living, glory be to God. To where people will put their eyes back upon a righteous living in this particular day and age that we live in. So many people love the new age churches. I talk to somebody at least once a week and they say, I've been going to this new age church, I love it. You know why? No call for righteous living. No call for righteous living. Enjoy yourself. That's what they say. That's the message of today. Enjoy. You're worthy of it. You deserve to enjoy yourself. You deserve to have some fun. Hey, uh, uh, I, I know a boy that I grew up with that was in a holiness church all his life. Strict. Hey, the holiness church is there. They just strict as we are. They grew up under strict rules, glory be to God, about following the word of God and, 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 and living righteous and living a whole. But, but last time I talked to him, he said, I'm going to one of them new age churches. I love it down there. He said, every time I leave, I feel good. <laughs> yeah, I bet you do. I bet you do. You don't hear no preaching on sin, glory be to God. You don't hear no preaching on living righteous. And when you leave, boy, you feel good about yourself. I bet you could go hear Joe Holstein uh, preach and leave the auditorium there feeling about 10 foot tall, real pleased with yourself. Because there ain't no call for righteous living today. 
We've got to have that call for righteous living. And we've got to recognize that it's going to come by and through the Lord Jesus Christ. So we've got to focus upon him. When you realize, glory be to God, that you're going to exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, totally dependent upon uh, God Almighty and Jesus Christ and looking to him, glory be to God. Hey, listen, friends. Hey, it's not the laws of ceremonies and things like that that we practice what Jesus said here. Listen to what he said. He said, listen, for I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no way enter into the kingdom of heaven. My righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees because it is righteousness that Jesus Christ imputes into us. Praise God that we work after and Jesus gives me that desire to follow him. Jesus gives me that desire to do what's right. Jesus Christ uh, through the Holy Ghost of God leads me and teaches me and so therefore my righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. How about yours? Think about it today. Glory be to God. Hey, listen, friends. They had religion. You know what the problem was with the scribes and Pharisees? We need to realize that, see. The righteousness in the scribes and Pharisees was totally dependent upon the law and upon ceremony. We depended upon the Holy Ghost of God and Jesus Christ. Lead us into righteousness. They had, hey, they had religion, glory be to God. They had religion to help them out. You know what we've got, glory be to God? We got the Holy Ghost to help us out. They had religion. We've got more than religion. We've got the Holy Ghost that lives inside of us that leads us and guides us to righteous living. There is still a call for righteous living. Jesus, Jesus said, I ain't going away with righteous living. He said the law is still has its benefits. He still wants you to obey the law. He still wants you to keep the law uh, to the best of our ability. He still wants us to work. And, 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 uh, Jesus don't want you to commit adultery. But you know what Jesus goes on to say there? In one place he said that, uh, praise God, and I'll probably be preaching on that later on uh, here before I finish this if God allows me on that way. He said when you look upon a woman and lust at her in your heart, you committed adultery. You know what the problem with the laws of the scribes and Pharisees? They worked on the outside. Always on the outside. But the righteousness of Jesus Christ works on the inside out. On the inside out, glory be to God. Hey, the Holy Ghost of God gets inside of you and he starts dealing with you. He lets you know when you're doing wrong. We all have the ability to be able to live a righteous life. You say, why then has the church gotten in this kind of condition? Because we have turned our back upon righteous living and we don't listen to the Holy Ghost of God when he tells us we ain't living righteous. And a lot of preaching ain't going on on righteousness. The real test of holy living is their relationship with God. A relationship with Jesus Christ. How much do we love God? That's the real test. That's the real test is your relationship with Jesus Christ. Praise God, friends. If you love Jesus like you are too, if you love Jesus like you are too, you ought not be uh, wondering, did the law say I have to do this or does the law say I have to do that? If you love Jesus like you ought to, hey, you wouldn't even have to have that verse, let not forget to assemble ourselves together and so much more as we see today approaching. We wouldn't even need that today if we love Jesus like we're supposed to. The, the, the righteous walking is, fo is totally upon, glory be to God. Hey, focusing upon Jesus and upon the love that we have for Jesus. And without that love, there is no righteous. And you say, then what's the problem? Why do we not have? Because when it's too many people today don't have the love of Jesus that they are to have in their heart. That's why they're not in church. That's why they don't read their Bible. That's why they don't pray. Because they don't live a righteous life. Why are they not living righteous? Because they don't love Jesus like they are to love him. Glory be to God. If we love Jesus, we can walk and want to walk in righteousness. When you fall in love with Jesus, glory be to God, Hey, think about it, friends. Hey, you'll want to walk righteous. You'll want to exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees when you truly love Jesus. 
You won't stop at the righteousness of the law. You won't stop at the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. But, buddy, when you really fall in love with Jesus, you'll want to go beyond that. You'll want to exceed that. And you know what will happen? You will exceed it, glory be to God, when you want to. Hey, think about it today, glory be to God. Hey, hey, let's think about Daniel just a minute. Bear with me. Let's think about Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Perfect example of the message today. Them old boys have been taken out of their land. They've been taken down yonder, uh, uh, praise God, uh, uh, in a far off country. And down there they had some ungodly laws and some ungodly regulations down there and some ungodly things for them old boys to do down there. But you know what they purposed in their heart? They's going to be righteous. They purposed in their heart they was going to follow God no matter what. They told Daniel, they said, you can't pray. And praise God, Daniel went by his window and he prayed. He followed righteousness. It wasn't, a, a praise God, popular, but he followed it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they told him, you're going to bow down and worship a strange God. And he said, ain't no way. He said, throw me in the fiery furnace and burn me up, but I'll not be unholy. I'll not bow down. And we've got Christian people profession to be holy today that's bowing down to a wicked world and bowing down to the devil today and getting out of church and getting away from God we need righteous living in our churches today there is a benefit to it and until we get righteous living back in our churches and back in our hearts today we're never going to see what Jesus is speaking about here Think about it today. Glory be to God. Hey, you know what? You know what? You know what them boys could have said? Well, we got an excuse. Yeah, we got an excuse, you know. The guy told us to eat them, to eat, to, to eat this meat and eat all this stuff and drink that wine and stuff like that. And, and, and they told us we had to. And they could went right on heading them anyway. They had a reason. They had an excuse. But you know what? They knew God would know the difference. Oh, yeah. We don't realize today that God knows the difference. Amen. Hey, we, we think today we can get out of church and, and, and claim to be Christians and claim to be in the will of God and not be in the house of God and not be in, uh, reading their Bible and not praying, not doing a thing, and, and, and everything going to be all right because we think it ought to be all right. But God knows the difference. Amen. God knows the difference today. God knows if we're putting every effort to walk a righteous life. I can't tell you who's walking righteous and who ain't. I mean, I, I might be able to tell you to a point. I might be able to see some righteousness in some folks. But praise God, friends, listen. Uh, uh, God knows. God knows who's walking righteous and who ain't walking righteous. I don't know what you folks do tonight when you, when you leave the church. I don't know, and you don't know what I do. You don't know what I'm going to do tonight when I leave the church. Maybe I'd be righteous or maybe I'd be watching something filthy on the television or on that computer in one of them chat rooms uh, 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 talking nasty. See? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You don't know. But I tell you one thing God knows. God knows what I'm going to do at the church. God knows what you're going to do after church. God knows what you're going to do Monday. God knows what you're going to do Tuesday. God knows what you're going to do Wednesday. God knows what you're going to do. Thursday. God knows what you're going to do Friday. God knows what you're going to do Saturday. And when you come back in here on Sunday and praise God, don't think that God don't know, uh, praise God, what you've done all week and whether you need to hit the altar or not, whether you're living righteous or not, glory be to God, God knows that. See, righteous living. But because, glory be to God, friends, because their commitments were so strong, old Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego. They set examples to those that were around them. Wonder, wonder what kind of examples we might set today if we really, you, you know, hey, hey, you, you remember, you ever have anybody say that that, that person's too righteous? People say that. They're too religious. That, that's, that's the one word. They, oh, that man, he's way religious, you know. He might be religious, but you can't be too righteous. 
Praise God, friends. Listen, think about it today. When we've got our eyes upon Jesus, this world today needs to see the same kind of commitment today in our churches that Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego carried out of the homeland of Israel and carried into a land and stood firm on God and lived righteous life. And that's what the people need to see out of the churches today righteous living men like Daniel men like Shadrach Meshach and Abednego that will want to walk righteous ladies that want to walk righteous